All right, if welcome back from the episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, this market here. All right, what a day. Uh, definitely a whipsaw Wednesday if there ever was one. That is for sure. Boy, all right. I think we have a cycle trigger here, um, something members knew about. We were looking for a reversal date um, early to mid uh, this week here. And I, th I think now we can say we have one here. Um, so spiders finishing down 1.7%. That does not even come close to telling the story. Um, tons of whipsaw here. Triple Q's down 1.36. The Russell, big loser on the day, down 2.88%. Um, this is starting to look a lot more like a bear flag there on the Russell. And then the diamond um, getting rejected that 20 day moving average uh, down 1.67%. Again, that doesn't tell the whole story though here. Um, <laughs> you know, we started off like normal, uh, just kind of like range bound, um, kind of a 4,000 pin there on the SPX before the FOMC, totally normal. Um, we got initial pop, Fed raising by 25 basis points as usual or as expected, right? That was already priced in. Market's got a little pop anyway. And then they kind of tease. I'm just going to pull. I'm going to blow it up here because this was all over the map. And then we, they kind of teased the downside a little bit. They squeezed them. And usually this is, I mean, this is very unusual price action here. Um, I'll say this. Usually on an FOMC day, when you take out a local high or you, you take out the reaction high, usually that's it. Usually you go higher um, or, you know, lower in, 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 in this case. Um, and we didn't, as you can see, um, they, they just hit a stop run right here. I'll even admit I got stopped out on um, the second. We had a winning trade on, on uh, spiders. We were short via SDS um, and we had a break even on the second half of our position. They stopped us out in the second half. So still a winning trade, um, but they got, you know, they 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 did the screw job here and they, they got people. And then we came down and, you know, we had a nice rally off the lows. I mean, this is a, you know, 395.50 to almost 400. That's a four point four or five point rally um, on the spiders in 20 minutes. And then Janet Yellen, not Powell. You know, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me talk. Let me get let's backtrack here. Why did we go down here? Somebody asked Powell in the press conference. Um, you know, hey, what about the market? They're pricing in basically rate cuts by the end of the year. And Powell just said the market's wrong. He basically shot that down as hard as he could. Um, and he really, he was actually kind of, it was almost kind of dovish in the beginning of his press conference. And then once the questions started coming in, he came in kind of hawkish. The market started to get a bounce. And then uh, I'm going to flip over here and I'll show you exactly, courtesy of Zero Hedge. Um, Yellen said, I'm not considering, you know, we're not considering broad, uh, broad increase in deposit insurance. And um, the market just dumped right after that. So there's your whipsaw. Um, and I think given the close here, we filled that gap really quickly too. Um, given the close here, I'd say we have a cycle in place here. So um, we should get a resumption to the downside. Basically, that's the way we're going to look at it. Um, again, one, one, two, and now we've got three lower highs here on the daily. That's a really good sell signal there. 50 MA rejection. We talked about this trend line, this down sloping trend line um, yesterday and, and the day before. And um, we hit that and pierced it and we got rejected there. Again, lots of volume there right on this on the selling here, um, even on this bar here. So going up there on less volume, it's generally going to be a rejection, but um, just just wild, wild action here. So and we did close below that 200 day moving average there on the spiders as well. So let's take a look at the SPX. So it looks like they closed the SPX right on or just above. So very interesting here. Definitely a market maker type move there. Um, you know, what can you say? Lots of whipsaw in this market. Now, what does this mean? Well, Powell's stance was pretty hawkish here. I think the next shoe to drop, I guess, in the bear case here is that you're going to get a lot of recession talk now uh, because he Powell does not seem concerned with the economy whatsoever. Uh, he cited the labor market multiple times saying like, hey, it's still tight. Um, unemployment can you know, we wouldn't be against it going higher, essentially. And I think the next shooter drop is going to be that recession fear. Um, he kind of dismissed systemic issue in the banking sector. So he doesn't seem too concerned about breaking things. And that's where I think kind of the market starting to kind of realize that. And you see the queues going up into double top there, 
getting a pretty good rejection with a, with good volume there. Um, Apple finally got to that 160 area and a little bit of a pierce there actually got a little higher all the way up to one, what is that, 162.14. So right up, didn't quite fill this gap there, but a pretty good uh, reversal. So Apple coming in as well, obviously dragging down the queues. Um, again, we talked about the Russell there, IWM. So again, down move and just a really weak bounce off the lows, right? So this is not participated in the rally. And one of the tip-offs today, intraday, um, intraday, strangely enough, regional banks, a lot of regional banks are in the Russell. And the bottom kind of fell out of this a lot sooner than everything else. So this was that pop. This is the initial pop. Then lower highs, lower highs, and the bottom fell out. As you compare that to the spiders here, that which did make an initial higher high. So regional banks kind of a um, little bit of a canary in the coal mine to a degree there. Um, even I want to say the XLF. Yeah, XLF never made a local high, another a new local high. Broker dealers, which we follow closely, did not make lower highs. Dow Transports, um, they made a new intraday high, but didn't take out yesterday's high. And again, this is a bearish inside bar here on the daily as well. Closing back below the 200. Again, we, we warned about that closure that weekly closing candle uh, <clears throat> below this inside bar that was bearish again back testing the 50 and now backing off there on the weekly so um lots of problems out here uh from a technical standpoint market is much much weaker here they tried to hold on they almost had it in you know around 330 you know you can see we were all the way up here around 400 on the spy and we were basically we were actually green and it looked like we were going to close with a spinning top candle on the day but they really flushed it there um, in the last, you know, half hour or so after Yellen made those comments. So um, I do think we have a cycle in play, a cycle trigger pl in play here. Um, this should, this area, we obviously hit it once. If we hit it again, it's going to be weaker. Um, you have this downsloping, you know, the all-time high trend line. If that gets hit again, it's going to be weaker. Remember, we've already got close to it once. We came down with a lower high. We pierced it. Now we've got an even lower high. One, two, three. Not a good look there. So if we go lower, um, you'll have some support at this pivot, 375, 368. And then ultimately the, the big level here for me is 365. That's gonna be your kind of your monster level. Um, I don't know if we get down there right away. You know, it's gonna be, this market's very choppy right now and the bulls are really sniffing out any sort of Fed weakness. But I think Powell did a good job of shooting it down today. Although, it was, you know, it's very, like like let's not sugarcoat this was a lot of whipsaw here usually you know for a while it was very indecisive looking and they really pushed it down in the final 30 minutes there but anyways let's get over to some sectors here as always smh here again i told you yesterday i don't see a lot of upside in this um you know we just pierced i said 260 261 we got to 260 88 and a pretty good reversal candle off of the highs again um yesterday i pointed this out there's your 618 right into that area yes you have a nice bull flag here but look at the volume on your where your resistance is so there's a lot up there and um you're going to need more to get through that and smh coming back in as expected there um you know we'll see back below 250 you'll probably be a fake breakout in fact the fact that we close back below this pivot could be a fake breakout you could say it is today um and then really you know I would say this green bar low is going to be your big level there on the daily, at least in the short term, um, if we start to sell off there. But SMH obviously coming in cloud software, um, not good look here. So again, we got a, we got the trend line breakout yesterday. We said we'll respect it, but now guess what? You got an engulfing reversal. Um, so not a good look after a breakout candle. So that will probably end up being a fake break. And again, this is what I said last week, um, or I should say two weeks ago. You know this failed candle there on the IGV. This failed candle on the triple Qs, it says that the next rally should be something that we can fade. Um, and that's the sell signal that I was getting here, and that's what we've got so far. So um, anyways, IGV coming in. We already talked about the transports there. Again, last week, we got a sell signal with that close below that big power bar. So that is weak there. Um, and this is setting up a base to push through this right now. So transport's not in a good technical picture, down move and inside bar chop. So we'll see what we get going into tomorrow. Now bonds, bonds are a, a total mess right now. The two year um, all over the map here, up moving. This is still consolidating. So technically right now, I don't really see any problems with the two year um, via the ZT. Yeah, I didn't like that candle we got the other day. We talked about that. We had a big tail there. So this still has a lot of supply. And if, again, if we go to the weekly, 
um, you know, you've just back tested the 50 week moving average and there's a lot of supply up here. Um, but this is a power candle. So if this consolidates, it can go higher. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm kind of neutral on, on bonds right now. Um, let's look at the 10 year again, same kind of deal. Um, you did make a slight higher high. You know, it is getting back above the 50 and the Fed does want to talk, uh, talk up that long end of the curve um, versus the short end. And so you can, you're seeing kind of the higher lows there in the uh, 10 year and the 30 year. So they are kind of, I guess it's a small victory here, but the two year still needs to kind of come in. Now, what else is interesting is now if we look at the two year yield, um, this is just the futures that's at 3.1, 3.91. Let's flip over to the actual yield here. Um, by the way, Bitcoin, nice sell on Bitcoin there today too. Um, yeah, 3.94. So that, you know, that's right there. Um, now the Fed funds rate, that's going to go up to 4.75 to 5. The Fed's now ahead of the curve for the first time in a very long time. So uh, maybe they did overdo it, you know, and I think that's a concern a lot of people have. And now, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, the concern now is going to be recession, I think, because the Fed's ahead of the curve now. They're, you know, unless the two-year continues higher, which I think ultimately it will. Um, but in the near term, that's where, that's where we're at. So... Again, we'll see moving forward, but I'm kind of neutral on bonds, at least for right now. Anyways, over to housing, XHB, nice 20-day, 20-moving uh, average rejection there. Again, still a down move, sideways chop. This is building up a base to attack that 100-moving average to the downside. Um, ITB, also a nice rejection. Never quite got to that 70 level, but um, nice little sell-off there towards the end of the day. VNQ remains weak. We've been telling you guys to avoid this one. Um, we've actually got some members that are short right now um, nice bearish inside bar nice breakdown here well through that pivot um, this is getting into support though so let's just be well you know be real about it we're getting closer right at this pivot right where this green bar is that's where you reverse those the october lows so i would say this downside here is probably a little bit more limited you know if we have panic or something like that can it overshoot and go lower yeah it absolutely can um again there's that big gap right there that's just below double bottom so it definitely could get down there but this is starting to get into some support levels and before i forget here in regards to panic let's look at the vix um tomorrow is or today right now is vixpiration all last year and all this year, there's been big moves the day after Vixpiration um, for the most part. So we'll watch. Um, this is going to be interesting. And the Spiders definitely had a weak close today. So we'll be watching for a possible big move tomorrow. Um, I don't know if that means we panic, but it's certainly on the table here. Anyways, um, over to Fins. We already touched on a little bit of XLF. Um, again, bounced off the lows down 2.32%, reversing all of yesterday's gains. Um, so basically filling that gap there. Again, I don't see a lot of upside. I don't really see a lot of downside either. I think a lot of it has been pulled forward, but who knows? If you get panic, you know, things can happen. KRE, not a good looking candle there. KBE, same thing. Um, again, I still think most of the downside is capped here. I think tech specifically has to play catch up. Um, but again, not, not a good look either way. Broker dealers, let's look at those again one more time. Engulfing reversal there. So rejection at 460 and uh, basically close right on that 200 moving average. All right, over to crude here. Um, nicely off the highs here in the after hours. So crude, yeah, it was right up into the close and then it's faded pretty good there into the after hours. So coming into some coming into some supply, I think this can be shorted on a bear pattern here. Um, I don't know if it's going to quite get up to this area, um, but I'm not a fan of crude here. I think this is just a dead cap bounce retrace. Ultimately, it does want to go lower to, to me. Again, if my theory is right, the market is going to worry about recession. That's going to put pressure down on crude for the most part. XLE, again, engulfing reversal as well, never quite getting up to that resistance area. Um, so showing a little bit of weakness here. Um, I'm not sure where it wants to go right now. There's still good support in this area here on the daily chart. So we'll see if we get a retrace. It probably has to do some backing and filling if it wants to get through that. But again, we'll take it one day at a time. XOP, uh, pretty much the same thing there. And then OIH, also nice outside candle. So that might want to satisfy that 250 down tar uh, downside target after all. Um, but pretty good reversal there on OIH, um, closing back below the 200 moving average. Nat gas here, um, retracing again today, coming off the lows here. So still not making a lower load. This does have a rollover tomorrow too as well. So I'm interested to see it will gap up to about 230. 
And they are bidding it up here a little bit in the after hour, so maybe trying to catch it up to that contract. Again, we'll watch here. I do think this is setting up for a higher low and a push higher, as you guys are aware. All right, dollar index. This was also a little strange here today. So dollar sold off pretty sharply, um, and it didn't really catch a bid even as the market um, was much lower in the... Sorry, I'm just looking at my other screens here. After the dollar closed... I'm going to pull up the uh, dollar futures here for you. Sorry, so bear with me. Yeah, so on intraday, so the dollar closed and um, we got a little bit off the lows right into support. I told you guys around 102 would be good support for the DXY. That's right when Powell said the market is wrong about us cutting rates and we got a bid, but um, didn't even come close to erasing the drop, right? So still well off the highs. It's off the lows too, um, but very good level here. So I'm interested to see what that does tomorrow. And with the market selling off as sharply as it did, you think the dollar would get like maybe a panic bid? Um, not quite the case here. Again, maybe it's just a, I, I don't know, a deflation print. Maybe the market's trying to price in recession. We talked about that. Obviously gold getting a bid, which is what we're going to talk to next. But I do like that level there on the DXY. So we'll watch that. Gold getting a bid, no new highs. I'm not in love with it right now. If it, you know, if it consolidates, it can go higher. We'll see. I'm not. I'm really kind of just waiting for that end of month print. So we'll see what we get there, um, end of quarter as well. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, gold holding up, and again, it has been kind of a fear trade lately. So that is to be expected. And you know, again, if we get recession talk, um, that could be factored in. Silver also green, up two and three quarters here. So through that twenty three handle. Again, you guys know 23.50, 23.65 will be resistance. Again, that uh, downsloping trend line there could also be a target as well. Again, commodities tend to overshoot, so we know that. Um, but yes, yeah, nice run off the lows there for silver. Um, platinum looking a little bit better here. I don't like this red bar, but you, you're inside of the big green bar. So if you do more backing and filling, this can firm up and go higher. Um, I'm not sure what it wants to do right now. I'm still just leaving it alone uh, for right now. Copper here, getting a nice bid, but came way off the highs again, rejected at that 50 moving average. I still think this has uh, one more leg down. Okay, lastly, let's get back over to trading view. We'll take a look at Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin coming pretty sharply off the highs. It is now off the lows though. Never quite got to that 30,000 handle up. 29,104 was the high of the day. And you're holding this green bar low. So you know, it, what's the low here? 26,926. So that's the level to watch going into the 8 p.m. close. If we take that out, then that opens up the door here for some downside back to 25, 25, 2, which was your breakout area. Um, again, this is a pretty steep megaphone pattern, though. So just be careful with it. And I, I've said that before. Um, if you're long, trail your stop because this has, you know, you're you're very close to resistance here. And you're very far away from kind of support. So that's just the the caution I would be, uh, I would give out on Bitcoin there. But it's still holding up. It's decently off the lows. So um, we'll respect it for now. But again, Bitcoin coming in just like everything else did today. Anyways, let's put back over here. Futures basically still at the lows. Um, yeah, so just kind of just fractionally higher there in the after hours. I think this is enough to trigger the, my cycle here. Um, they did save the 200 MA by the on the SPX on the spiders. It did it did break, so there's one out of two. But either way, you got a 50 MA rejection, um, and you've got now three lower highs here on the daily. That is, and if that confirms on the weekly, um, that is a huge and I mean a huge negative there. So, anyways, guys, gonna wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com. We'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.